What's up? How are you guys today? It's actually been over a year now since we've spoken about air quality in this video. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. And today we're going to go over what I'm currently doing in my apartment. I decided to do this video today because uh, last week I was having some migraine headaches, couldn't figure out what it was. I, I hypothesized it was the air quality, maybe the radiation, and all I really had to do was open a window and within a few hours I was feeling a lot better. So despite knowing all these things about health, sometimes I do overlook certain aspects and it is really important uh, to be on top of things. It's also unfortunate that in our modern world you have to pay so much attention to things that you would consider pretty insignificant and crazy and stuff. And uh, I guess we'll start with the most surprising thing, at least to me, that plants aren't actually a great air quality solution. And I'm not sure how accurate that is, you know, what the percentage of oxygen versus CO2 is in their um, breathing cycle. And most people know, oh, plants suck up CO2, they release oxygen, they filter the air, they increase the quality, and that's true. However, at night, plants actually use oxygen and release CO2. So when there's UVB on the plant, it's releasing oxygen. However, at night, it's the opposite. So from a CO2 versus oxygen perspective, are plants really helping that much? I'm not so certain, but I will say, I, I think they are filtering the air, recycling things, almost like some type of um, you know, air filtration system. So they're definitely helpful. However, it is kind of overstated in that, in that sense of the oxygen versus CO2. And uh, I have a few plants here. I have a few plants in the other room. And you also have to pay attention to how healthy the plant is because I was feeling really good, you know, even without opening my window for a while. But, you know, when the plant started to wilt, when I was being lazy, not watering them as much, not using the, the grow lights I purchased on the plants, I, I noticed like a slight decrease in the air quality for sure. So not only do you have to have a pretty large amount of plants in each room, basically looking like a jungle, you have to be really on top of the maintenance with the plants, use grow lights, use UVB bulbs, water them frequently with high quality water, and then you'll notice a pretty big change in air quality. But it's, to my understanding, not 100% because of the oxygen and CO2 thing. And uh, some of you guys are like, Frank, what are you doing? Spending all that money on bottled water uh, to water the plants? Guys, I used the chlorinated tap water one time. Use the tap water one time that I have here. It almost killed like $150 worth of plants. So I'd rather spend a few dollars every time I water these plants and then completely kill them within a week and have to buy all new plants. So uh, the, the chlorine in the tap water, and if you don't have a good filtration system on your tap, the water will actually like kill the microbes in the soil and actually cause the plants to wilt. So uh, th that's my understanding of kind of the plant side of things. Ideally, yeah, you still want them because they still filter the air to some degree and they still do produce um, what I'm guessing is a net increase in oxygen and air quality. It's just not as significant as I had thought initially. So before we talk about the air filter, I did want to tell you guys where I got the plants. Uh, just Home Depot and Lowe's, any home improvement store, and you wanna pick out the ones that have the highest amount of foliage leaves, because you know the more leaves the plant has, the more it's gonna filter the air. So just pay attention, see which ones are more voluminous and it's not too expensive. You spend like 150, 200 bucks, you should have your whole apartment outfitted. But if you wanna go really crazy, you could probably like contact a nursery uh, or like someone that sells wholesale plants and then spend a larger amount of money just to just put so much in your whole house. But in that case, you would definitely want uh, like a good filtration system so it's not so expensive to water the plants every day. So this is a Honeywell air filter. Uh, I actually got these on sale. I will put them on my Amazon shop or some type of filter on my Amazon shop if you guys do want to get them, amazon.com slash Frank Uh This uses a HEPA air filter. I think it stands for a high efficiency particulate air filter. And that simply means it removes 
like over 99% of dust, mold, bacteria, and pollen. So you're not breathing in like all the physical particulates and, and all of the crap. Uh, it's still not going to filter out like some chemicals and gases and certain things that can be in the environment. But overall, uh, this does significantly improve the air quality in the room. So this combined with the plants are two things that most people should be doing. I have three of these. I run them on turbo in each room. Pro probably not necessary in a lot of rural areas, uh, but you know, if you, if you have the expense, if you can spend 100, 200, 300 on an air filter, um, at least putting it in your bedroom or where you're spending most of your time is definitely worth it. I just keep this on turbo. And because I do have the, the people smoking in, in the other part of the house, I, I think this is a more significant and more impactful thing in, in my circumstance. So I've been running this for a month and a half now. And I mean, it does look like the, the filter has picked up a, a decent amount of particles, uh, which is supposed to be replaced, I think every six months. So it's definitely helping to some degree, but you know, not enough that this is the sole thing you could just plop in your room and not have to get any plants or not have to open any windows, which we'll talk about now. Now these two things we've been talking about, the plants and the air filter, they're helpful, they definitely make a difference, but they are not the most important or significant thing, which is simply opening a window. Now, depending on the area you live in, this is not as simple as it sounds. Yeah, if you're rural on the farm, da, 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 you could just leave the window open all day. If there's no air pollution concerns, if you're not by a highway, if there's not a lot of fumes and gases and you're you know, being in a city or a heavily populated area, that would cause air quality issues where at certain times of the day, you know, if you open up your window and someone's doing yard work and blowing gasoline, you know, it's, it's actually worse. It's a bad thing to open the window in certain circumstances depending on the location. So you have to be mindful of that. And one of my viewers uh, brought something up which I never really thought about. Uh, you know, when people aren't driving, when there's not that much activity, you know, like three, four, five in the morning, is, is when there's gonna be the least amount of pollution in the air. So if you can time it, you know, before people start that morning rush hour commute, you know, four in the morning-ish, and open your window then for an hour, kind of air your house out, let that quality air come in, that's really the best thing you can do. So most people might not have to do that. You know, just opening the window is already going to significantly increase the air quality. But if you're in a really bad circumstance where, you know, you're New York City, for instance, I mean, that it might not make much of a difference in that case, but there are times of the day where there is much less pollution than other portions of the day. And when you're trying to optimize aspects of your lifestyle like this, you don't want to overlook silly stuff. You know, like if you just leave the whole house closed and the windows sealed for like four or five days a week, then opening the window in general regardless is going to refresh the air and it's something you definitely need to do. So, you know, if you notice you're getting headaches or something less severe, like your energy levels are low, you're not feeling that good, you're a little lethargic, you're probably not getting enough fresh air. So go outside, see how you feel. And this would happen to me a lot too, especially in the winter time when you forget to do that. I'd step outside, I'd feel so much better. That, that's a very, very good indicator that the air quality in your house isn't that great and you have to really air it out and, and get on top of that. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this has helped you out to some degree. Uh, as I said, the home improvement stores or nursery, you can get plenty of plants. Uh, I will be doing more of that when I have like a more permanent uh, living situation and uh, as well as the air filtration systems. I'll put some of them online and you can probably find them near you too. It's, it's very common standard stuff, HEPA filter. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it's definitely something you want to try out and see if it makes a difference. Outside of that, you guys can go to frank com to support me through all of my businesses. Please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining, guys. And I'll see you for the next video.